Well, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Dwayne Matz, and it's time again for another Primetime Devo. We've been talking about this matter of prayers. We find ourselves in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Today, we're going to look at verses 1 and 2, and it reads as follows. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. That's First Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Prayer, as we have seen, is a vital part of oratory chapel, worship services for Christians. And the prayers are to include these different facets that we have discussed previously. But how in the world are we to expend those prayers for all men? I mean, come on, we'll be there forever praying for all men. Well, the best answer is we are not only to pray for the members of our congregation who are present, but our prayers should be for people outside the church walls as well. And we ought to trust the Holy Spirit to bring these all men to our remembrance as we pray. I mean, he knows better than we who needs prayer. Listen to the Apostle Paul as he addressed this matter in his letter to the Philippians. He said in Philippians 1, beginning at verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. What was he saying? He was saying every time the Holy Spirit brought these Philippians to mind, he prayed for them. He thanked God for them and made spirit-led requests for them as he prayed. This trusting of the Spirit to bring to remembrance in order to pray for others ought to be part of free-flowing congregational prayer. Who will your local body of believers be led to pray for? Hmm. I don't know. And here's the thing. Why not learn to quiet down, settle down, listen, and let the Holy Spirit lead? And don't be surprised, by the way, if someone breaks out in prayer on behalf of the enemies of the church. For Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, that we should indeed pray for them. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And of course, uh, as Paul adds here, our time of congregational prayer ought also to include praying for those who are in a position of authority outside the church walls, again, as the Spirit leads. For there are many civil authorities in our sphere of influence and in the sphere of influences of churches around the world, and these authorities have much impact on the quiet and peaceable existence of the church. And you know, instead of railing against them like we are so apt to do, why not bring them before the one who put them in place? Why not bring them before our Heavenly Father in prayer? Which course of action is more likely to produce the desired results? Railing against them? or lifting them up to the Lord. Well, that's all the time we have for today. God bless you. Thank you much for joining us and tuning in. Remember, Jesus loves you. Tell your face about it.